YouTube. <laughs> what is up, everyone? Welcome back to the Steel to Stone channel. So today, finally, as you guys can see, we have a Crew Carta Paramilitary 2 with the brown canvas micarta scales and the satin finished crew wear blade. And yeah, so I think I made the original video about this knife coming out in January of this year. So now we're in the middle of November. It's finally here and available for people to purchase. There are still a few retailers, I believe, that haven't received theirs yet. So keep your eyes peeled again if you still want to get one of these. And we'll take a good hard look at it real quick. Quick, I'll give you guys my initial impressions. And then I'll probably use this a little bit and do a full review eventually. But yeah, let's take a good look at it. And then we'll compare it to the original paramilitary 2 or you know the standard paramilitary 2 that's out right now so this one as far as i can tell it's exactly the same as the standard pm2 there's no difference in dimensions the blades are the same the handle thickness is the same the lengths all that stuff all the dimensions are exactly the same this blade seemingly can be swapped out with any other paramilitary two as far as i can tell it looks exactly the same without me taking it apart i believe that it can be centering on this is pretty good the action out of the box i haven't done anything to it it's really really good d10 is nice and not super strong but definitely adequate and yeah falls closed right out of the box Got a light bit of lock stick, but nothing serious. Not like some of the others that I've seen. This one had really bad lock stick when I got it. But uh, yeah, so <laughs> um, let's just go ahead and talk about it and take a look at these scales and the fact that this has full liners. So brown canvas my Carter scales. I think that these look great. I think they did a really good job with these as far as the finish on them they're nice and fluffy textured so they feel really good in hand so i like that a lot uh the radius around the edges looks to be about the same as the standard paramilitary too doesn't look a whole lot different um it's hard to tell if it's a radius or a chamfer it's so small i think it's just a chamfer yeah so it's the same on both of them and uh instead of like taking this and nesting the liners they basically just took the the standard thickness of the scales and cut it down 50 thousandths to keep the thickness the same and they didn't nest them so this is the result of that you've got liners that go all the way to the edge of the scales so there is one big benefit to that that some people care about and uh, i think gerald from outpost 76 made a video about this the other day saying that he's excited about this one because you'll be able to turn this into a skinny scale PM2 if you want to do that, if you're into that. And, you know, a lot of people are. I did one of my, the only set of scales I ever made for a pair of three, I turned them into a skinny version. And it's cool. It's comfortable. I like the way that it looks. And, you know, it'll be good for people that want to do it on this one. But as far as I can tell, that's the only real benefit to doing these scales like this. I thought originally that, you know, people were saying that this was going to be like their hard use PM2. That's why they were doing it like this. And, and that would be the purpose of the crew wear blade being extremely tough, as well as having full liners. And, you know, that kind of made sense to me at the time when I heard about it. But after actually getting this and looking at it, um... I don't really see how this is any better than the standard PM2 in terms of it being more of a durable handle. Yes, it does have full stainless liners that go all the way out to the edge of the scales, but as you can see right there in the middle, this thing has a huge cutout around the compression lock, and unlike the original, it doesn't have the little... Um, tab around the outside of the compression lock to cover up that big gap so that's just a big open almost looks like a like it's broke off or something <laughs> it just doesn't look normal or natural for a pm2 to have that and they did mill out you know a space for the compression lock to fall into when you disengage it so they did cut all that out, but they decided to not leave this section right here. They decided to cut it off as well. So that leaves a big gap right there in the center 
for your the fat of your palms your hand to go into so you've got about a what is that a quarter inch gap there for your the meat of your hand to go into if you're really using this hard in comparison to you know the hundred and sixty thousandths on the original so that's a big old big old cutout right there they did make the compression lock tab itself a little bit wider to sort of fill in that space a little bit i guess but nonetheless it's still uh still a big hole right there and the reason i mentioned that is because they cut down the overall thickness of these scales so instead of being whatever they normally are about 140 thousandths they're now basically going to be 90 thousandths yeah without the liners they'd be they'd be 90 thousandths so given that it has this big milled out space right here it doesn't make it any stronger than the original since the thickness of this wall is the same on both of them it's going to be the exact same strength as it as this would be if it were a nested liner PM2 with a micarta scale. It's going to be basically identical. So I don't I don't really see the reason here why they decided to go this route. Other than maybe you could argue that, you know, it saved them a little bit of time and machining costs, which got passed down to us with this being only $170 instead of you know, over $200 or close to $200 like the Maximum PM2 is or the S110V PM2. I'm not sure how much that one is, but I know the Maximum one, that's a little more justified because it is Maximum and it's extremely hard to machine and just deal with in general. It's a really high-end steel, but I don't know. I don't know exactly why they decided to go this route. But what I will say is for those of you who do want to make a skinny scale PM2, this will be great for you. But in terms of it being stronger and better for hard use, I don't think that that's necessarily the case. I will use this and do a full review on it and, and see how it feels in comparison to the regular PM2 when really bearing down on it and putting a lot of pressure on it. But just because it's got full liners doesn't necessarily mean it's going to make it that much stronger of a knife it's still a folding knife it's not meant to be used to pry two by fours apart or you know baton through tr tree limbs or anything like that it's still a folding knife and i can't see that it's really any more adequate than the original in terms of hard use aside from the crew wear blade but you guys let me know what you think about this um i am excited about it i'm glad to have it i love crew wear and I love my Carta. So it's still a great knife. I just feel like they should have left that one little section right there. And maybe that's something they could easily change in the future at the very least. And yeah, that'd be great. Maybe they won't. Maybe they will. I don't know. But either way, still a good knife, a great PM2. And, you know, for the price of 170 bucks, that's only about $20 more than a standard PM2. I definitely think that this one's worth owning and like i said if you want to do the skinny mod on it you could definitely do that and this might be perfect for you so either way those are my initial thoughts on the new crew car to pm2 let me know what you guys think in the comments below and we'll catch you next time